Okay. <laughs> okay, here's an experimental setup. I'm in the kitchen, so the sound will be a bit more reverby. I have a book. Okay, so someone asked for a review of the book Divine Intimacy, and I thought it'd be such an easy thing that I could do it while I'm cooking. Do you want to see what I'm cooking? There we go. I'm cooking stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. So, um, so yes, Divine Intimacy is a book by Father Gabriel of St. Mary Magdalene OCD. OCD, and OCD does not stand for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, but it's a Carmelite thing. So he's a Carmelite priest, and he's written this enormous book. So, Divine Intimacy, Meditations on the Interior Life for Every Day of the Liturgical Year. Translated from the 7th edition of Intimita Divina by Discalce, Discalce Carmelite Nuns of Boston. Oh, so it's American. There you go. So, <clears throat> the general structure is it has meditation for every day of the liturgical year. So, it's, um, here we go, December, here's one, December the 27th. So, around Christmas time they have, based on particular days, because yeah, December the 27th is the Feast of St. John, that usually it has the Sunday, so uh, his fifth week after Epiphany, if I can find the beginning of that. Ah, here we go. The Bond of Perfection, the fifth week after Epiphany. So it'll have the, the Sunday meditation, which will be about the Gospel or the Epistle. And then after that, we'll follow <coughs> six individual meditations following through a theme of the whole book. So most days are following a plan, like going through the catechism sort of thing. It goes through um, the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Um, I should have written notes. Yes, so the, each meditation has a little act of the presence of God at the beginning. So for this one on baptism, it says, O God, who without any merit on my part have made me your child, grant that my life may be worthy of this divine sonship. So that's a short, short... Um, yeah, so if you've done any sort of meditation, um, they usually start with a, a act of the presence of God. For Opus Day, it was, Oh my God, I know that you're here, that you see me, that you hear me. I do you with profound reverence, ask pardon for my sins, and the grace to make these moments of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. I'm not a numerary of Opus Day or anything. I just spent some time hanging around Creston College at UNSW. So it was a good place. Anyway, so that's a basic sort of thing. So different places might have a formula or you just, yeah, it reminds you to take time to settle down. Then it has a meditation divided into two parts. There's a fairly long meditation and there's a second part. And this is giving you stuff to think about. It's written like it's teaching you something. And um, they have a lot of quotes from... Uh, St. Teresa the Child Jesus gets a lot of quotes from the Bible, of course, and you get to know other different um, different writers. So St. Hilary is there. I think they've got a, is it in the back they've got a list? They used um, abbreviations. So in the back they've got a list of all the abbreviations if you want to see who says what. But you sort of get a feel. Sometimes you get a quote, and I reckon that yeah, you start to think that was definitely St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. And sure enough, there's the TCJ at the end to indicate that. That's the analytical index. I didn't know this. It has an analytical index which goes through different um, topics. So if there's something in particular we want to read, you can look up for the topics. There's the abbreviations. So there's abbreviations, Epistle, Gospel, oh, Roman Brewery, Roman Missal, St. John of the Cross, Ascent of Mount Carmel, Councils to Religious, Dark Night of the Soul. You can see a Carmelite sort of flavour. Yeah, so it's, so it's a bit Carmelite. It's pretty heavy going. Okay, so we talked about meditation. Meditation in two parts. And then at the end, there's a colloquy. A colloquy is a fancy word for a discussion. Back and forth sort of conversation, conversation. So it only gives one side, the, the person's, the pray, prayer, the prayer's side of the colloquy. And often it's it's aiming higher than I'm at yet. So it's sometimes, yeah, oh my God, I desire to renew very fervently that promise today. Therefore, with all my heart and all my strength, 
I renounce you, O Satan. I renounce you, abominable sin. I renounce you, detestable world. Oh, this is St. John Eudes. There you go. I hope I pronounced that right. Yes, I give myself entirely to you forever. So, yeah, so sometimes you feel like you're not quite in the, not up there yet, but it's something you can aim for. And, yeah, and the more I think about it, when I, I come up to this and I feel like, I don't want to quite say that yet, but still, that's, <clears throat> I know it's, it doesn't make sense to hold back, does it? Because God is all good. God can do all things, yeah, go for it. So, what else? Yeah, there's a, so most of it follows the church as you, you know, like in a missal, it's got the bit at the front going through the Sundays, and then it's a bit at the back going through special feast days. So, at the back there is a thing on, on feast days. That's only a short, it's much, much shorter section, so that's where the, the feast day sections is much smaller than the main day sections, so... Mostly big feast days of Our Lady, I think, purification. Oh, St. Joseph. St. Joseph's Life of Faith. There's a few in St. Joseph. So if you ever want to swap it out or double up, you can add in some extra ones depending on particular feast days. So, yeah, it's got two ribbons, a black one and a yellow one. So I've been using one for the... <laughs> you see, I haven't... I haven't um, been reading it lately, so it's right at the end of the liturgical year. So the last time I read it was um, 19th week after Pentecost. So I sort of laid off, on, um, yeah, put it aside for the Christus Rex pilgrimage because I knew travelling around I probably wouldn't have time to, to get this out. And um, now it's the beginning of Advent, so if I wanted to put the ribbon in the right place, it would be right at the front. So, yes, it's a, it's a good book. I didn't buy it. My mother, Teresa bought it, who was named after St. Teresa of the Child Jesus. Um, so, and, and she was using it, and it's sort of, see, I don't know if she's taken up using it when I've laid off, but yeah, so she was using it and saying, oh, have you used it yet? And said, oh, no, I haven't got around to it. And then when I was using it, I said, oh, wow, did you see that thing? And said, oh, I'm not using it anymore. So if, if you take our example, it's all right if you don't um, use it consistently forever and ever. Um, the dinner's looking a bit burnt. Is there any other questions you've got? I can I can go over it some more, but that's that's a general thing. There's there's an introduction. There's a letter from His Holiness Pope John the Twenty Third. I don't I don't know very much about John the Twenty Third. I was going to read a book about him. Um, anyway, yes. So there you go. There's that that gives pretty much. I wouldn't give a. There's quite a lot of food in each meditation, so you could read it the night before, think about it, and then bring it to prayer in the morning. Um, yeah, they're, they're good. Yeah. Okay. Ask. I'll go and, and stop the dinner from burning and God bless and see you next time. You see, I've got nice caramelized onions. Actually, doing a video is good if, you, if you're never patient enough to caramelize your onions. Do a video and you'll have nice caramelized onions. God bless.